Father, we thank you this morning for your beautiful presence in this place. We thank you that you are in our midst and that we are so aware already, even just at the beginning of this meeting, we're aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit was full. He is here, he is here, and 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 he is here. Ek bid die Heere vir oop harte vir oogend om die woord, die ingeplante woord, die woord wat die in ons wil plant vir oogend, dat geest en hart vir oogend oop sal wees, om te ontvang. I pray this morning that every heart be receptive. Holy Spirit, you are so hard, and without you we can do nothing, but we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you that your people are here, that you want to touch this morning. Your people are here this morning that you want to impart into the, the field is, is right here, it's present in God. The field is here for a great harvest this morning. Go plant the word in us, but the spirit here is for God. Breathe the air in us, but the, oh God, teach us not to hear with our ears, but to hear with our spirit and with our hearts. That we we'll truly receive what you have for us here this morning. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. A groe verborgen, ontstaan in een nieuwe dimensie, in een nieuwe openbaring, in een nieuwe plek met God. Ek groe verborgen, ons is bezig om Heer te breek in een herlevingsveld. I believe we are busy breaking through into a new dimension of the Spirit of God. Listen to me this morning. Attacks are flying left, right and center. Let me tell you, in our little fellowship there in Brits, we've had one attack upon the other during the last month. Do you know that Satan does not attack what is not a threat to him? Do you know that persecution, the Bible says, everyone that wants to live a godly life, that means a life sold out fully to Jesus Christ. Such a life becomes a threat to Satan, a threat to the kingdom of God, because you're about to break through, you're about to step into the supernatural, something incredible is about to be loose. Do you know what that's the kind of life he persecutes? I stand for all the people I say, no one will sell you in blood. I say for all the verdeel the heart. 50% van jou hart behoort aan God en 50% behoort aan jou eie opinie, jou eie leer you're not going to be in trouble for the devil, he'll leave you in peace yes, amen. maar die woord dat hy sê opstaan vir die Heer en hy sê God ek verkoop my lewe uit aan die you enter a war zone in the Holy Ghost you enter a place where Satan will persecute you and you're going to walk in the power and overcome because of the anointing upon your life. I go for all of these cells as of dear brak through. I'm not scared of persecution. I don't mind persecution. Fortunately, God has trained me over the last 27 years to handle it, to understand it, to press through it, and to come out on the other side more victorious than I came than I went in. What did my career move to man? Mates, uh, Persecution, dat is die vervolging en al die dinge wat samen kom en die die vervolging kom baie keer uit die bron wat in die mens te verwacht. Ongelukkig, in die eie huis sal die die om die vreemdeling instuur om jou seer te maak nie. Hy gebruik die een wat die naaste aan jou is, wat die die liefste is en wat die die meeste vertrouw hier jou is. Dis die een wat op die oude met die dok en die sy of in haar hand loop en nie is besef dat dan op daar die oomlik een instrument word in die hande van die vijand nie. The reason these things happen is because your life is aligned with God. Omdat jy op pad is, omdat God bezig is om jou leven te rug, omdat jy gevaar word vir die vijand, omdat jy op een plek kom waar jy waar jy sien, kijk, as jy die ouwens aangaan, gaan niks in die keer nie. I want to tell you, I believe we are there at the moment. So ek wil jou verochend bemoedig as jy hier moeilik uit gaan en sê, yes, ek verstaan nie lekker wat aan gaan nie. Dis die een ding op die volgende ding. Dit lyk soos brandes wat my slaan. You know, I just, 
as soon as I come up to catch my next breath, the next wave is there, you beat me down, and I've got to fight for my breath, and if I get my head out of the water, the next wave is there again. And I don't quite understand this, because you know, I'm a child of God. Well, if you're not you say that this is the hantekening, that's the authenticity, that's the signature uh, on your life to say that you are in the right place. Want die Heere groot en machtige dinge, die in jou wil doen, ek groe, en mooi wat ek groe, die area is so ruim ver, die jy wil luister, jy sien het miskien nog nie, maar jy weet nie wat gaan gebeur, is die kracht van God waarachtig los by jou. I'm at the point now where I feel ready to start working in tents and on the things that net soos het nou is, nie of wat geen dienst en nie, haar levens dienst en net soos het nou is, met die beweging van God met te vat, by te kom toe, dat die Heere kan begin weg, en dat God dorpe kan begin skit, en God mense kan begin skit, en dat die Heerige Geest kan begin hart op vrede, dat ouwe so van die stoep kan sit en hoor wat God sê. Amen. Because that's going to make a difference. We've got to break out of the walls. The good here, but my mates is hard to fool, but Psalm can believe. I believe God is busy preparing people. The reason I believe you're a part of the fellowship, not everybody here may be a part, I don't know, I'm not counting heads. I love my little group of people that I know. It's with me, I love them, because they're shouting out to the same measure I am. En dis mense wat jy kan vertrou, en mense wat jy jou die hebe voor kan gee, want hulle stap die pad saam, hulle verkoop saam uit, hulle saam in jullie jou. Because it's impossible for people to be with you and not pay the same price. Die disciples koos die kruis dra wat Jesus gedra. They had to pay the same price. The same rejection, the same shame, everything that was upon Jesus was upon their lives. And now as men say, but after for God I forgot, they become my friends because they walk the journey with me and they follow him with me in the footsteps of Jesus. But what I for all of you will say, those that are a part of this move, I want to say to you this morning, God is positioning you because he wants to use you. So as we begin with the fellowship in Brits, I told you when we started, it's the apostolic work of God. What does it mean? It means God is going to raise up an apostolic church, a people of power, a people equipped that He can use mightily, that will be a part of the answer, a part of the ministry, that He will flow through and make a difference in the city. Ek groe die Heere en mense begin voorbereid en hy is nog steeds bezig en binnenkort gaan ons uit beweeg en span, en apostoliese span in die naam van Jesus en we gaan make a difference in the city en ons gaan Godse fakkel dra in die area in en I'm telling you wherever the fire of God goes, brother it will burn jy kan al die nats aan jy die vierde daar in die snag gesien, jy gehoor van die verheerde aan die fire sien, my sê You know that fire was so intense they couldn't quench it. The only thing they could do is remove people out of its way. Ek sê, dis profeties van die vier van God. Van die vier van God, die het al die brandweermanne van die hele gauw tank en die by mekaar gemaakt. En al die herkopters en al die natsakke wat jy in die handen kan kry. Maar die vier van God sal jy nie uitslaan. And you won't stop it. You will not stop it. It's an unstoppable fire. And you know there's not really even a place to flee from God's fire except if you flee to darkness. Where the fire of God is, there is light. And the light draws people out of darkness. Amen. Let me speak to you a little bit this morning. Ga ek net met jou bietje praat oor a oor a eenvoudige hart. A eenvoud. Dan praat ek van eenvoud of enkelvoudige hart. An enkelvoudig hart, I'm going to read a few verses, I'm going to do it from the English Bible. I, I looked through a few translations I like. <clears throat> Luister gauw na Jeremia 32 vers 39 in the NIV it says, and don't get scared of I'm reading from the NIV. Read your King James if you want to, lees jou ou vertaling, maar kyk ook een beetje na die nieuwe vertalings, want baie van hulle bring baie mooier uit wat ons in die ouwe vertaling het, en ek is een voorstaander van die ouwe vertaling, ek sal nooit vir jou sê, gooi jou ouwe vertaling weg vir die nieuwe vertaling nie, ek het nie as die Afrikaanse nieuwe vertaling in my huis, 
But I've learned that you must also just, if, if, a, if a verse says the same thing in the other translations, just have a look at them. But by keer bring hulle a rond uit en a mooiheid uit in die skrifvers wat jy nie in jou een bybel gaan kry as jy net na hom gaan kyk nie. Want een woord in die Grieks het baie keer baie meer betekenisse. One word in the Greek can have 20 different meanings or 20 different variables in what God is saying and what many Bible translations do, they choose one out of the 20 and that's the one they decide they feel they should go with en dan as jy na die ander 19 gaan kyk dan vind jy uit yes, maar jy het gemis want dan jy miskien een woord gebruik soos mooi en dan gaan kyk jy na die ander 19 dan sê jy fabelachtig glorious arrayed in splendor majestic en dan die ouwe geskryf Mooi. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many times it's worthwhile just looking at the rest. And then if you look at different translations, they've, u- they've used out of those 20 words different words, and you get a fuller expression. Okay? And why forget this? Now go it away. So as I get done listening to the other and the other talent says, I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to I'll stay with the original text. Jy sal weet wanneer die geest met jou praat. Amen. Listen to Jeremiah 32 verse, um, uh, chapter 32 verse 39, it says, I will give them singleness of heart and action, so that they will always fear me, and that all will then go well for them, for, and for their children after them. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says You will keep in perfect peace Those whose minds are steadfast Because they trust in you Another translation says You will keep in perfect peace Those whose heart is stayed or planted upon you Acts chapter 13 verse 22 says After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to. And then James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If you need wisdom... Ask our generous God and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with a divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. A single mind heart. What betekent dit vir oogheid? Wat betekent dit? Kan ek begon vir oogheid hier vir te sê, om een enkelvoudige hart, vir God hee, beteken dat jou leven nie verdeeld is, as dit by die Heere kom. Jy sê, wat gebeur? What happens when you got a double, when you got double of anything? If you got an apartment with two rooms, or a house with four rooms, uh, what's the difference between having an apartment with just one room? The difference is that if you have one room, you fully occupy that one room. As jy meer as jy het, dan beteken dit, jy maak ruimte ook vir iemand anders in jou huis. So either you got a single apartment that you fully occupy, you can't go anywhere out of that room, you live in it, you move in it, if you don't take a bath, you're still in that room. 
You gotta, um, you gotta have a, a, a meal or cook a meal. You're in that room. You sit down for dinner. You're in that room. You go to bed or watch TV. You sit in that room. There is rooms like that. I've seen them in Cape Town. You know, one time uh, I was visiting my friends. Then he first said, "No, we go." I get my friends come to me. And was raised to the army of the army of the field. And I said, hey, now is it not going. And on that side, I don't know if you can get a wedding house. I get a little bit of a wedding house. It was a clay out there, see, you know. But I got a lot of it. I said, well, yes, he is on a top clay wedding house. And I have a lot of Yes, he would eat that for you. He makes it for you. You want to say that the wedding house? I said, that is a high school. I said, well, oh, sorry, man. I said, you money want any the house is now for the claim. I said, bro, we go in the like I said, he's so blue, we'll be sure. There is small houses like that in Cape Town. A friend of mine, we were driving, and I, I mentioned him, I said, this is very small houses. He said, yes, they are so small that if the, the woman sits on the toilet, she can stand the soup on the pot in the kitchen. Is all within reach. So what I'm going to say is, as God in your life will, then seek the Lord and in come to trap. If God looks in the chambers of your heart this morning, He's looking for a single occupancy. He's looking for one room that He will occupy the entire house. A divided heart makes room for God plus. It makes room, this is what James says, he says, you make room for God plus the world. You want to accommodate God in your life? In other words, when we're in meetings like this, it's all hallelujah and praise the Lord. And you can put it on the horse of your word of it. And all is going to be But it's many of the people you live on the floor of the different your word of this. Only half your life is represented in a meeting. When you leave that meeting, you walk in the rest of the rooms in your house. But God is looking for a single-hearted man and woman. You see that God mentions here in the same respect he talks about soul, King Saul and King David. Can you remember what the difference was? What was the physical? What was Amos and David as in soul? What caused God when the king was to be selected and when all David's brothers were invited to join him for the king to be selected, what made the difference that God could not find a king around the table? What caused God to make the small boy be caught out in the field that was tending the sheep? What had gemaakt that God is a David gesien het, wat hy nie een soul kon sien, en wat hy geen van sy broers kon sien nie. Jy sien, Samuel het vir kwalificaties gesoek. Samuel was looking for qualifications when God sent him to the house of Jesse. The brothers came around the table and Samuel started looking from the perspective of the natural and he looked at the first one, Abinah, and he said, Wow! This is tall and big and strong and qualified. A qualified soldier, maybe even a higher ranking soldier in the army of God. Surely he'll rise up just like Saul. He'll stand head and shoulders about the whole nation. Surely he must be the one that God has chosen. And he has a form. Half a baby would he. And he went through each one of those men, and none of them qualified. And then the Holy Spirit said, This one, I said, I don't know what you're doing. I said, I don't know what you're doing, but I know God that my Nabia is to get here. And the Lord let David roep. And he was the word, it's my son, my. The Lord says, to them, he says, we will not be seated around the table before he does not arrive. Isn't that wonderful that God can make room for you? When others don't see you, don't appreciate you, the Lord will make room for you. Maybe this morning you are small in your own eyes. Who am I? I'm not the TDJs. 
You know, I don't have the whole world on my feet. I don't have the nice suits. I'm wearing second-hand shoes. Who am I? Let me tell you this morning. If God calls you, you'll call everybody to attention and make room for you. That's on the house. That's just an added blessing this morning. Wat het God raak gesien het David? Die Heere geef ons die antwoord en handelinge. He gives us the answer. He tells us what he saw in David. He says, I found in David a man after my own heart. Wow! What does that mean? It means that, that David made no allowance for anything else in his life except God was sovereign in his life. He had a single-hearted relationship with the Lord. God was involved in every area of David's life, every decision, wherever he went, every battle he had to fight, whatever he had to do. He was single-hearted in his life. He lived a life of worship. And the year is saying, I and David, a unfilled heart. A heart wat net aan my behoort, en daarom kies ek om voor allemaal. This morning I want to tell you, if you want God to choose you above everybody else this morning, not meaning that you're going to be better than anybody else, meaning that you're going to be chosen. Because many are called, but few are chosen. Because you see, when it comes to the chosen part, God calls everybody of us. Help me get from us in the room. I can even open all the doors from the checkers. Whether you work at Web Store, you got a calling if you say God called you. Not to be saved, you work for the kingdom, to be a part of the kingdom, to be a part of the answer. You got a calling on your life. Alright, so many are called, few are chosen. When it comes to the chosen part, that part entirely is up to you. The calling part is up to God. He calls you. To be chosen is up to you. Because it depends whether you are going to be willing and to what measure you're willing to have a single-hearted relationship with God. The dam of of jij bereid gaan wees om te sê, God, ek gaan een enkel kalme verhouding met jy, een enkel hartige verhouding met jy, ek gaan my leven uitverkoop, maak die stap wat het kost. Whatever the price, whatever the cost, I'm gonna go with you, all the way, even if it costs me everything I have. And it means, Jy sien ons is makkelijk om die dinge te beleid vir God te sê, Heere, al my goed is nie goed, Heere, wat ook al die vraag, whatever you want me to do, go, I'll go, whatever you want me to say, I'll say, whatever you want me to do, I'll do, He is my life, God, and then the Lord stops at the first treasure in your life, and He sê, sê dit op die altaar vir my, en dan sien jy net rook, en tyres, en rammer vlieg, maar dan sien jy slap mense vlieg, Then the bricks come on. When God starts asking you, okay, sacrifice, yield, come with me. And that's where the choosing part comes in. Because God cannot choose you unless you choose to sell out to Him. You see, so many people are in ministry, but they never go beyond the place that God's called them because God cannot take you beyond your place of surrender. Beyond your place, the more room you make for other things in your life. Listen, the last 27 years, I speak of experience. I'm not telling you fables this morning. I can tell you categorically. I even had to leave my big ministry behind to stand before you today. But thank God I did. Because the journey is sweeter now than it's ever been. With all the miracles that happened, with all the people being touched, it's sweeter for me now. Because I realize I'm walking in a dimension of the Spirit I never walked in before. And there's new things God's going to take me into that He wouldn't have been able to take me into had I held on to what was precious to me. If you start walking, reading the history books, listen, we want to talk. Was Prat Graf on Smith Wigglesworth? No, he came for Smith. Die kent vir Smith. Ok, wie weet vir Smith? <laughs> Daar is ons een verskil tussen ken en weet van. Ken beteken en jy al met die intiem thuis van die heer, man. 
Ek weet al bykie meer van jou as wat ons het handig geskid. Ek het ek al eens gekry om bykie in die hart in te kyk. Ek het ek al eens gekryk om bykie voorbij en ek kon in jou inkyk en jy het dis ken. Weet van beteken, yes, ons het enig handig geskid, ek weet van hom. Smith Wigglesworth, if you don't know about it, please go buy a book. Not just about his miracles, buy one of his teachings in there. Be careful, John G. Lake. Daar is een ouwe, vroeger daar, in die hoek, een pastoor, daar is nog een, yes, jylle ouwens, gaan onder jylle groen in Monnewerke nie. Wanneer jy as jy jylle groen in Monnewerke, dis net dat wanneer jy nooit gevallen kom, maar hoeveel jylle weet jy wat jylle groen het? Nee, maar van die Monnewerke. Moet nou keer jy die pastoor besê? I'm just teasing guys, moet nie al so ernstig op wat ek sê, en betekend sal ek jou so bieke jou siel uitbrek en jou bieke in een ongemakkelijke plek waar jy sê, waar kan jy nou pas door? Jy kan nie so sê vir my nie Amen As jy die mens is een leerlinge gaan lees en bestudeer wie ken van Catherine Coleman daar is hy kry jy die hele leerlinge in die hande Al wat mens op concentreer is aan die wonderwerke. You know, we we read about this person that God so marvelous to use. Catherine Coleman, Smith Wigglesworth, so on. But we never take the time to learn about their lives. And actually, that's what they would learn. For your learning, you have been able to fear the earth. But if you as God, you will God teaches you, you'll find out when you pick up the books of those people that your life runs parallel to this. The Christian, the Catholic woman said, I die a thousand deaths. I die every day. The Christian, then she says, that sacrifices are paid. You got no idea what this ministry costs. You got no idea the journey and the altars I had to build for God. As you have Smith wheels with the Christ, ga you out from my prayer to you with an ankle full of heart with God. I can you turn from the dawn to you. As you have John G. Lake begin to listen, I can you out from the view say, there's no rent in your life anymore for the world, for the things of the world. Consecrate your life completely unto God. Get into a single-hearted relationship with Jesus. Weet jy hoe kom het ons so baie probleem in ons lewe vandag? Weet jy hoe kom sikkel kerk mense? You know why church people battle to get breakthroughs and why there's so many troubles? And I'm not talking about persecution. That's a different kind of trouble. I'm talking about issues in our lives. Troubles, issues, worldly issues that come into our life. Do you know why? It's there. Do you know why it's there? Because we make so much room for the world in our lives. The less room we make for the world and the more room we make for God, the better it will be with us. And I read that from the word from Isaiah this morning. Did you hear that? He said, it will go better and better and better with you. Omdat jou hart om God het verkoop is. Kind van die Heere, luister my volgen. Die Heere soek mense met enkel vir die waarde die sy soek. Revival demands, if God's going to choose you, if you're going to be a David in this generation, in this season, that God's going to use as your lewe, waarachte vir God, an aanvaardbare dank offer gaan wees, en lieflinge geer, is looking for you to become single-hearted. Do you know to be single-hearted sometimes is the most costly thing on the planet, because your family may not follow you there. Your family may not follow you if God calls you. As God jou roep om een altaar te bouw, kan het baie moeilijk wees dat jou vrou na jou alba nie sal met jou wil bouw nie. Maar God het met jou gebouw. Dit kan wees dat jou man die altaar nie sal met jou wil bouw nie. Maar God het met jou gebouw. Die kom met jou. And that is where the choice comes in to say, Oh God, no matter if I go alone, now it's not about ministry, now it's not what I can gain, now it's not about who I will be or what I will be, it's between you and me only. And I'm telling you, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to go even if it costs me my family. And believe me this morning, we as a family have been 
Die goed wat ek vir jou bedien, is nie goed iets wat ek in die grip krijg nie my broer. As jy nie pak met God begin stap, sê ek vanavond vir jou die Heere, begin een schoonmaak proces in jou leven, waar ek jou uitbring, waar jy alles op die altaar sit, voor ek vir jou alles teruggeer. You gotta understand this, but then I want to say to you this morning, unless we are prepared to go there, I'm telling you the church of Jesus Christ is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller because if you don't live in that place of single-heartedness with God, the devil is going to rip your life apart. Mag nie saak hoe geestelik jy is nie, mag nie saak hoe heilig jy is nie, mag nie saak wat sy goed, hoe hoog jy in die Heer is nie. As jy op die plek kan lewe, waar al nie meer ruimte is vir jouself, en vir die wereld, en vir ander dinge, en waar jy nie totaal God oorgeen, en hier ook wil ek consecrate for you to God, and there's room for other things in your life, why not my brother? If you're not going to live there, you're going to lose the message. If you're not going to live there, you're going to lose it. The devil will rip your life apart. I guarantee you. Persecution will come, storms will come, and you won't be able to stand, and you won't be able to hide from them. But if you are planted on the rock, you'll overcome them. If you see your heart, you'll overcome them. Nie eers Jezus was storm bestand nie. Not even Jesus was in a place on earth where, where he was, where he was, what will I call that? Where he was storm free. He had to go into the storms on the lake of Galilee. He was in the boat. Even the day he walked on the water was stormy weather. But he was walking in the dimension of the spirit where he wasn't walking in the storm, he was walking on the storm. Can you see? Maar nie is Jesus was vry daarvan, waar wil ek en jy van hom kom en ek, as Paulus nie vry was van die hele nie, wat wil jou met jy van vry is? As Petrus nie vry was, as nie een van die disciples ooit vry was, van die probleme en dinge wat gekom het, as gevolg van waar die Heere was, wat maak jou dink dat jy nie vry is? Weet jy daar al vandag, there is millions of people in China that is suffering because of their faith. What makes them less special than you? Your circumstances is different. Yes, you're in a free country for the moment. You can worship God free without persecution for the moment. What makes you more special than the guy in China that's going to hide in a cave to pray? I want to hear a TV evangelist say the following. He said, I thank God that I'm an American. I thank God that I live in America. I thank God because look at the nice shoes I can wear. Look at the nice suit. Look at your nice suit you got on this morning. Your nice uh, shoes. Do you know there are people in Africa that have to worship in mud huts and that have to walk barefoot to church. Thank God I'm an American. I thought, my God, you got to get saved, brother. Because let me tell you something, those barefooted worshippers in the middle of Africa in their mud hut may be closer to God than your heart is in a million centuries. We got the wrong conception, the wrong idea. We think ourselves to be positioned. And if I'm going to tell you who this preacher is, you fall off your chair. It's not even one of the compromised guys. You fall off your chair. I'm going to tell you who said that. I think pierced my heart. Because I realized if you preach that way, you're far away from God. You know, because we live in this country and we see the poor loving God. And we hear some of them, these guys, the others are for all entertained here in Engels. They got nothing. They sold it. They, they earned a thousand rand a month at another ministry. They earn each one of them a combination of money. You know what? Because the ministry went into compromise. They gave the money back to the preacher and said, We can no longer follow you. We rather live under a bridge, 
and serve God than to compromise and eat from your fatty points. Don't say, give me more people like that. They live by faith. They've got no income. They trust God. You see them. When you see them, you'll see them smiling. When you look into their eyes, you'll see the, the life flickering in their eyes of God. There's not a sorrow in them. There's not a there's not, there's joy in their lives. And all the servant died. My God, as he stayed in the spirit, he was so quiet, and the manager never came. But they got so tender, he came out of the heart and walked for him. Of us, of us, of some food here, and I'll say, here I bet God, I'm not happy with this car, I need a new car. God, I prosper me more, make it better for me. My God, for honor, can you make it a good race to her here? My God, I need this and I need that. Single heartedness. Single heartedness. Father, I desire you above all. I'm telling you, God is looking for people like that. God is looking. Let me give you something that the Lord gave me. And I want to share this with you. This is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Let me just get there quickly. This is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Listen to this. He said, we can no longer stand aside hanging our harps on the willows. We don't have any concerns. He said, no, you can no longer hang your harps on the willows. It's time for God's army to march. It's time to make up your mind and to decide whether you're on His side and willing to bear His cross. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit to expose all unrighteousness and those who harbor it. Jesus never did that. Jesus would never keep silent if you were going wrong because He did not want to offend you. He would tell you what your problem is. Straight out, with love, in love, but He will love you too much to leave you the same. He tell you whether you are offended or not. But He'll tell you the truth. Because it's the truth that will set you free, that will help you, that will bring you through. If you keep lying to people because you don't want to offend them, you're not helping them. You're helping them from the pan into the fire. God wil hee, ons moet een weermacht word, wat uitverkoop is aan die Heere, uitverkoop is aan gerechtigheid, enkelvoudige harte, ons gaan nie ruimte maak vir kompromis nie, ons gaan nie toelaat dat die duivel mense belieg en besteel nie, we gonna stand in righteousness, irrespective of the price, irrespective of the cost, who is with us is with us, and who is against us is against us, but we not moving our position from where God has planted us. This ankle fold of broom. That's single hearted. I'm rooted in God. I'm rooted in truth. I'm a messenger of truth. I can hear two ears split in the tongue. I say any no sure, no no sure. I don't have a double hearted mind. I don't change my heart. No sir sure. And skill it. That's other stuff here sure. No sir. I'm planted and rooted. You can draw a line through my life. And while you begin it, and while you end it, you're going to end in a straight line. God is seeking people that will sell out. Ons moet daar kom. Dat ons uitverkoop aan God en aan gerechtigheid. En bereid is om spreekbuise van gerechtigheid te word. Because if you make double rules in your life, God says you're going to be unstable in all your ways. It means you're going to sing different tunes at different times. You can nooit die selde ding anhou sê, jy gaan vandag so, morgen het jy weer een ander idee, dan sê so vandag is, is, is hierdie kerk wonderlik, morgen is die rauwe stem. What change? Did the church change or did you change? Het iets gekom, wat jou hart kom stuur het, dat when you used to repent your knees, you went into rebellion? Is that maybe the problem? Because I don't think the church changed overnight. You see, the 
oomlik wat God ons begin converteer, ons kan Jaan Amen sê vir alles ou boed, mens is so, ja, amen, prijs God, en dan kom die Heere, alles wat hy gesê, dan bring hy het na jou toe, en sê, kijk, kom ek met die jonge, dan druk hy net op my plek, en hy druk net, as jy daar nie, en ek wil, die, daar sê, ok, doe nou wat ek jou gewaas om te doen, dan is die amens weg, dan kom ons op saans kunnen eindig, Nee, dit is die tyd, want hou jy het amen geskree, want hou jy toe God vir jou gesê het, jy moet bereid wees om jouself te vernederd, you remember, he told you, humble yourself, he told you, surrender your life, he not your will, my will, give you, you remember all those amens you shouted, now God's pressing your button on a way that's causing you to go into rebellion, no, no, go to your knees, go to your knees and say, Father, change me, work inside of me, not everybody else, me, change me, I have to do that every day of my life, that's why I can preach it to you, every single day of my life, I'm asking God to break me more, every, I'm telling you, the last few weeks, I've had encounters with God, that's crushed my life in places, broken in places, I've never been broken before, and it wasn't so nice to go there, get up there and say, oh God, you possess places in me that's always been mine and I didn't even know it. Thank you. Thank you. Break me more. Work deeper in me. Change me more. Every single day of my life. Because you either progress in God or you die. There's not something in the middle of the brood. As you don't grow in the if you don't grow in the spirit, you die. There's no in between. There's no place of just hanging around. And that's why, I don't even know if Moenoy knows it, but I know the British people do. That's why I said to you from the very beginning, the program is change. And God will continue to change you. And you've got to be continuing to allow Him to change you. And it's going to be change upon change because it's glory upon glory. To the measure that He can change you, the glory will come. Amen. Amen. All right, let's listen to this. It's time to take a stand for righteousness. Okay, I've read it. Let's draw a straight line and stop walking around the truth in circles, hoping that it is not going to challenge us to stand for truth and to stand against those who do not hoping that we will be able to please everyone and offend no one. Being a Christian means making a choice, not at those times when it is comfortable or convenient or what suits you and me, but in all things to stand as the anointed of the Lord, even in the persecution that may come as a result of it. God cannot go to war with sissies. Hy gesien wat die Heere gedoen daar met 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 ou Gideon. Just the whole nation was there, huh? Everybody, look, on the outside they were all armed and speared and and God brought them to the water. He said you got a bunch of sissies here, but we're going to lose this war. He says tell them just do the following. Just tell them, those that want to go home for some reason, go. When he said that, you just saw a little line of dust going. There goes, I think, 27,000. If I'm right, is it, was it 30,000 that gathered? And then it came to three, and then to 300. I'm not sure of, of the figure, I think I'm the right. Who feel was that in the beginning? Was it there, I think? But was it coming to Gino, the wearing glass? Come, Pastor. Hoor nou, hierdie pastoor sê, hierdie pastoor, kom pastoor. I think it was 30,000, 27,000, or it doesn't matter whether it's 2,000, 27,000, hightailed it out of there. Scared. Suddenly, they debride it, oh, or who knows what else. 3,000 left. And the Lord said, mm-mm. 3,000 may be brave, but they're not all with you. Take them to the river. 
And then the river God separated out of the 3,000. 300. It's not about quantity. It's never been about quantity. Never. It's always been about heart. The heart. Single-heartedness. Do you think those 300 were single-hearted? Think you was in and in heart? Think you it was so God gefeest that it was nothing bang was? Think you it was wahre facts, man? God shoots a man and vrouwen. But wie wat? As jy hier gaan uitloop en jy loop om die hoek en jy gaan kompromeer in die gegoed, want is dat ook meer om ons skreef so begie, jy hoor, broer. As jy hier uit gaan verhoren en jy loop hier om die hoek en jy gaan sit jou TV op die sports channel, skop jou skoen en sê, ja, het was een lekker boodskap volgende. Al persoon het nog wel lekker geprek, ons kijk hier die bok en hoog en doen, flik bykie die channels hier so. En jy wil oor nog te gaan. You've got a revival burning in your heart. I said, no, bro, as God you grip me is more, and you leave this place, you will find a place to be quiet. And you shout out to heaven and say, God, you need to help me to reorganize my life, reorganize my priorities, reorganize myself, because I truly want to be a man of God. I want to be chosen. I want a single heart, God. I want you to move. God kan nie berg nie, jy ons jaar vir die keer vir jy leid nie, man. Voor kennend. Wees, wees dan van jy van die 7, 7 kon aan duisend, en dit is high playlist. Nee, 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 nee. Jy kan alles kan nie met TV kry, jy kan nie. Sports channels. Nee, op rugby. Bultong rugby. Bultong rugby en oranges. Or lemons. If you are not sold out, you will forget it. And that's why I believe the latter day group of people God's going to choose in this season is going to be a small group. Powerful, but small. People look for thousands and thousands. No, I don't see that. I see a small, single hearted group through whom God will shape the nation. People, because you see, God, He doesn't need your power. He doesn't need the strength of thousands. He's got all the power. Yes. He just needs a few people that will allow Him to live His power through them. Can you see this? Right. God cannot go to war with sissies. Let's stand with God. Draw the line and be prepared to lose those who will not stand or agree with us. The spirit of revival is never free from opposition or persecution. Jy moet mooie dinge sê, God daar meer om vraag. En gaan een paar bellen verloor. Because you're going to go into places other people are not prepared to go into. You're going to press into new territories in the spirit where people are going to say, you nuts. I read here in Moina, I haven't done it in Brits. I shared with him out of the uh, Azusa 1906 revival just now Wednesday, is that right? I read from the book. I'm going to do it in Brits, Moino as well. <laughs> in Brits as well. I'll share it with you. You listen to those people and what happened to them. And you get the two sides. I actually forgot to read you the news clips. We'll do it next time. You'll hear what the world said about them and then you read about what they experienced in the meetings. And it's two different worlds. World called them nuts, crazy, fanatics. And yet they experience God. All right. The spirit of revival is never free of opposition or persecution. Do you really want revival? Then be prepared to join yourself to Christ, to all of you. Amen. I say my for all of you. As the year for all of the year of the year of the year of the Hoeveel kamers in jou hart behoor in jou omreen? Tell me this morning, how single-hearted are you truly? Ons as pangster mense het die vergevings van pangster lang om die kant verloor. We've made it about talking in tongues, we've made it about hopping, skipping, clapping us, that identifies now a Pentecostal church. 
When Pentecost was poured out and the early revivals, what defined Pentecostals were that they were single-hearted men and women who had sold their lives out to God. They walked in the holiness of His Holy Spirit. They were totally and completely sold out as far as the world was concerned. And religion, they were freaks. Nero sprung a hundred trumpets and nothing wrong with that but that's what we've made it to be signs, wonders, miracles falling down, rolling around talking in tongues who like the cause for your heart is it single heart are you truly living the way that you worship him of the two part of the what you want to Een van aanbidding, dan lijkt hy so, en morgen lijkt hy heel te lang anders. As as jou morgen is, sal as jou glad nie herken nie. How is your heart, is your heart true? Is it really planted in God? Is it really consecrated Father? You got my life. The way they see me here, is they meet me tomorrow, or they come to my house unexpectedly. They will find the same person. The same heart, the same Jesus. And I pray to you, don't fall in your dear prayer in your heart. There's somebody scrag of vacant who means a double heart of this. Mensen kom in dienst en ek kom dien die Heere, maar by die huis dien jy gaat nie God nie. Dit doen dinge in die geheim, wat jy van allemaal wil wegsteek, maar allemaal vir God. We hide everything from everybody. They're not supposed to know I'm doing this. I'm doing it in secret. You know? I've got that little little cabinet there in the corner of the garage. Right at the bottom, I've stacked, there's a few books there, but they stack into between the other books. So if somebody comes there, they'll find the farmer's weekly on the top. And then if they go a little bit lower, then they'll find, you know, wheels. And, and all those things, but right there in the middle, there's one special little book. I won't tell the title. On my computer, I, you know, I, I, I've got a file that's hidden so deeply into the other files, and, and I'm, oh, I've hidden it in this file, and then open another file, and put it in, and, I, and I, you've got to open up to 10 files, because I just don't want my wife here to discover that file. Nobody knows about it. Yes, except God. We've lost our fear of God to the place where we care what people will think if they find out, but we don't even realize God knows. God sien die dinge man, dis open bloed vorm, maar ons het nie meer een vrees vir God nie, ons gaan in sy huis kom, kom staan en aan bid en al die dinge doen, lewe jy enkelvoudig. Of is jy bezig om jouself in die geest van God te probeer te dreigd. Are you living in a place where your heart is really true? Or are you lying to yourself and trying to lie to God? Come on, brothers and sisters. We talk about revival. Revival starts nowhere else except in your own heart. If you become true, seek your heart with God this morning, if you prepare to break, if you prepare to let go, I say, your afgooit is al wat staan. Je ziet ons probleem is, Want hou jy die boek van handeling met Paulus in die stad ingekom. He walked into a city. Do you remember that? He walked into a city and he saw the, all these Grecian gods. All the altars to these gods. And there was one little altar there called the unknown altar. Do you remember that? Ek wil vandag vir jou sê, die altar sta nie meer buitenkant. God sê nie sê. Alles bid en niks van die heren. Every person has got their own altar now that they built the way they believe that should serve God. No, no, but I believe it's this way and this way. No, 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 but I believe this. I believe. And so we built our own little altars the way we're going to worship God. You know what? There's one altar that's become fairly unknown in the church, but it's the only one God will recognize, and it's the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the only way you're going to you will worship this God. You're going to become a partaker of the cross. You're going to become single-hearted. Mm-hmm. Who, 
Hoe, hoe lijkt uw leven met die tot verschillende goedjes? Kijk een heel of is jullie hebben waardig van jou, God. Raag is een goed manier. I feel the anointing, I feel the spirit of God, the anointing now. I'm about to close. I want to ask you this morning, will you allow the Holy Spirit to go through your heart? Will you be willing this morning for God to choose you? He called 30,000 at the end. He chose 300. It's easy to come when God calls. But will you be chosen? Will He find in you this morning that life that says, Father, I dedicate myself. I give myself. Or would you rather go? That's the option. Om in haar leven te gaan, is het totaal uit van koop van jou eie leven. Het begin in jou huis, nie om as my man hier jy nie, nie ek vir vergeet. God het nie na Sarah te verkom, vir sê Sarah, wat is jou opin? Dan kan ek hier al hoor. God didn't go to Abraham, to Sarah, he said, Sarah, I bought Abraham, what is your opinion? He went to Abraham and he said, come. And Sarah wasn't very happy. How do we know this? Well, she kept trying to make a plan to get out of the story. You know, take Hagar. Get out of the baby. Let's go. I want to get back home. I need a hot bath. I'm tired of desert. I want a garden. Let's go. And when the Lord spoke to her, finally she was the one that laughed at God. So her heart wasn't really tuned in to the whole thing. They didn't make a bet. I'm just telling you, whether husband or wife, male or female, this is the best example that jumps to mind. I'm not hammering on the woman. Ekpapi or Bielani. Khatni, because in Christ there's not male or female. But this is the best example I can find. And whether it's your husband or your wife or your child or your person, whatever's going to hold you back, God speaks to you. You. And it's hard with your pride. You cannot start wondering, you know, but what if that one doesn't follow? What if this happens? Nee, 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 nee. God is with your pride. Stand jy op en we gaan die pad staan. Stand jy op en kry jy enkelvoudig hart in jou leven. En sê, ga die Heere vol uit die, as my man dit nie afhoud nie, dan is dit nou maar so. But I'm not selling out! Yes. I'm going with God. As jy dit kan recht krijg, dan God een kans om jou vrou oor te ren. Because she'll see integrity in you. And even if she runs away from you, let me tell you something, the Holy Spirit's got a way to bring her back. Amen. God het jou eerst nodig. He let you first. You first. En as jou man weg gaat toe, God het een manier om te arresteer. Maar wacht het my jou. Waar is jou hart volgend? Hoe lijkt jou leven volgend? Is jy volgend bereid? Het gaat jou kies koosluit ons maak. Wonderful Holy Spirit. Thank you for your tender love. Lord, even when you speak to us this way, it's nothing but love. It's love reaching us. It's love calling us. It's love speaking to us. It's love calling us and saying, I want to possess you. I want you to be full with me. I want to be near you. I want to be your God. I want you to put me in first place. I want to be your everything. I want you to walk with me. I want you to be single-hearted this morning. Give yourself to me. And when you do that, everything in your life will go well with you. Trust me. Glue my forehead. Is that what you your brought? I want to start this morning with people that's in this congregation that don't know Jesus Christ. The anointing to save souls is here right now. Dus mense volgen, maar die Heere nie ken nie. En wat ek daarby bedoel is, it may be the first time that you give your heart to Jesus, or you might have backslid. This morning the anointing of the Spirit is here to call you. And it's up to you now. God's calling you. Right now, the Holy Spirit is speaking in your heart. And you know Jesus is speaking 
to me. And when I don't want to run anymore, I want to consecrate my life. Look at all of my open sin. There is my dear. I do not know. Darling, for us. Darling, thank you. On the world of open sin. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. God, ik ga net verkoop aan die, ek gaan die omdraai, tweedens nou verwoord, en as die reeds weet, wat hier ook gaan reageer, tweedens, you're sitting in this place this morning, and God is calling you, you know the altar, you see the altar, and you realize what you need to go and fix in your life, and what needs to get on to that altar, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, I need you to respond, I don't care if you're a pastor, an elder, a preacher, an evangelist, or what, if you've served God for a hundred years, you need to respond right now, Right now, lift your hands. Don't be here, man. Gehoor saam met ons in die plek vir oogend. Obedience, faith is here. God is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, you see every heart lifted. I'm going to ask those whose hands are up, stand with me. Every eye remains closed. Stand with me this morning. Let's make a full hour consecration. Come on. Stand with me. Jesus, and when you have God from the other people, the God's words of your life, of your life, of your life, of your life, God brought me down for you, you let yourself for the other people. It's possible for one another to look, but God brought me down. Where are you for God? Where are you? Last 